Good morning, everybody. We are on Ion Test Ahmed Olive. We are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about nine lines from the top. Massive Rav Kahana. All right. So we are almost at the end of the second to last uh, parak over here. And what the Gemara is talking about was we've been saying over the last few days now, right, that a husband and a father, they can be Mayfair a neder. They can also be Mekayim a neder, right? And, and the way we've been understanding is that if a person hears the neder, if a father or a husband, they hear the neder for a day, right? There was some discussion what a day means. Is it a 24 hour period? Is it until Shia? Whatever it is. But if they're quiet for a day, that is Mekayim the neder. Yesterday, towards the end of the daf, or maybe towards the middle of the daf, depending on, I guess, where we landed, but, but Rav Hanina had a, a tremendous chiddish. And he said, even though the Pasuk seems to say that if you're quiet for a day, you're Mekayim the Neder, that's only if you're quiet with a specific purpose. But if you're Shosek al Manas Lamekat, if you're quiet, not because you want to be uh, made for the Neder, but you're quiet to annoy your wife, whatever it is, the point is, you, you just want to keep this netter going for a little bit, but you fully intend to do hafara tomorrow, some later day, then you can even be made for you know, a week from now or uh, 10, 10 days is left off, I mean, in the, even in the future. And uh, the Gemara had a kosh on it. The Gemara is going to continue to ask, and we're going to actually bring a few different tiyuftas to, uh, to disprove Rabbi Hanina. So we're by, like I said, nine lines from the top, Masiv Rav Kahana. So the Pasuk says, if the husband is quiet, uh, the Bryce says, the Pasuk is specifically saying in this instance, right? If a person, even if a person is quiet, he's quiet with the, with the intention of doing how far later on, it doesn't matter. If you're quiet for the full day, that's it. You're a Makayim the netter. So it seems like a, a clear question on Rabbi Hanina. But the Bryce continues, Ata Omer Oh, and Alba Shosek Almanas the Kaim. How do you know the case is talking about where you were Shosek Almanas to do Afara later on? Maybe it's a case, Dafka, where you were Shosek Almanas the Kaim. But Rabbi Hanina is right. If you wanted to, you could, you could be quiet with the intention of doing Afara later on. But the Bryce says, Kishu Omer at the end of the Pasuk, Ki Hacharesh La. There's another use of the word Hacharesh at the end of the Pasuk. Hariba Shosek Almanas the Kaim Akas Medaber. So the Pasuk at the end, is talking about a case where a person was shosek amanas lekayim ha mani mekayim hacharish yacharish la isha. So what do I do with the beginning of the pasuk with the, with a hacharish tacharish la at the beginning of the pasuk? The shosek amanas let me get a custom and so the Gemara says that's a tiyufta. You're saying though that the Torah is essentially talking about a case where a guy just wants to annoy. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but the, <laughs> but the. Uh, <laughs> But, but the Gemara continues. The Gemara says, well, well, well the Gemara says, wait one second. The low game, ha, the amanas lakayim. Maybe one use of hacharesh is a case where a person was shosek because uh, he specifically wanted to do akama. Ha, the shosek sam. And the hacharesh at the end of the pasuk isn't talking about shosek amanas to make God. It's talking about a person with shosek without any real intention. So again, how do you know? Maybe Rabbi Hanina is right. He was watching the ball game. He, whatever it was, he heard, he just. Would it, would it be the first time any of us, you know, didn't didn't really, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> but the Gemara says, no, there's actually cry you see Eric Sivi. No, there's actually three uses of the word hacharish in the Pasuk, right? The beginning of the Pasuk says him hacharish, yacharish la, two uses of the word hacharish. And then at the end of the Pasuk, he hacharish la. So there's three different uses of the word hacharish. One of them is a case where I was shose stam. One of them was where I was shose almanas lakaim. And the third is where I was shose even almanas lamekat. And still, in all cases, I only have a day. So, Rabbi Hanina, the Kyufta Rabbi Hanina. Okay. One more for good measure, or two more for good measure. Masiv Rava, Rava is the Kasha. He says, We learned a few days ago the case where the Mishnah said, Nadra im if a man hears of this netter, let's say Shalashuddha's time, the case happened to be, it was, it was, it was Shabbos, right? So, he heard of the netter Shalashuddha's time, made for law, Achalo Hashka. You only have a short amount of time until you're able to be made for the netter. Shem lo, hafer v'chashcha, if you were not made for and shkia came or says or whatever the time is, eno yachol hafer. And in fact, if you recall a few days ago, we ended up learning this was this was the machlokas tanaim. According to the person who said that when you're made for on Shabbos, you could only do a farah if it's the Torah Shabbos. We said, how are you even going to learn this? Well, what is, what is even a case of Torah Shabbos 
right at the end of Shabbos like that. But the Gemara is asking, I don't understand. If what you're telling me is so long as a person has a good reason for his shtika, and that doesn't constitute a hafara, so then am I? If, the, if this person hears of the of the netter shalashudis time, even if he's quiet, that shouldn't constitute a hafara. He should be able to say, listen, I'm quiet. I'm only quiet because this isn't a Torah Shabbos, but I'll just be, you know, I can't do it on Shabbos because you know, whatever it is, but I'll do it Mati Shabbos. So why is that a problem? It must be Rechanin is wrong. And so long as that as there was a shtika, even if you have a good excuse as to why you're so sick, it doesn't make a difference. It still constitutes a fara. And the Gemara says Tiyufta again. And then a third one, just for, we're kind of piling on at this point, must have Rav Ashi. Rav Ashi has a, another kasha. We have a Mishnah later on. And it says, Yodea ani shiyesh mitarim. Let's say a husband says, I, I heard my wife make a netter. I am just an Amar. I had no idea that I even had this ability to be maker. Yuffer. So then he's allowed to be maker even later on. What if a person says, I know the halachas of Hafara. I know the halachas of Midarim generally. Right? As we've seen, 80 blot in. There's all sorts of weird Lashonos. Konam. God. So the guy said, like, I didn't realize what she did was made a netter. I mean, it had she said, you know, I would have known, but she used some other Allah, whatever it is. So even though I know the halachas of Afara, I, in theory, I know the halachas of Nadarm, but I didn't appreciate that she made a netter right now. So now I'm ready to at some Aflokas. Rav Meir Omer, lo Yafar. Rav Meir says, your Afara doesn't work. But the question is, according to Rav Meir, right? According to Rav Meir, if the guy didn't appreciate that his shtika was a Afara, so according to Rechanina, let him just say, you're right, I was Shosek, but I didn't mean it. I mean, my shtika was, I just, I didn't appreciate the halacha. So, but clearly that's not the shot, right? Rameir says it still constitutes a good afara, and therefore, tiyufta again. So we, we I guess, poor Rechanina, he says halacha, and we just like keep going at him. But the bottom line is, that is the end of Nara Hamarasa, and I think on to the final Tarek in the garden. All right, so the, the last barrack. <laughs> so the last barrack, the Elu Nadarim Shu May first. We've been talking about how far all this time. Now the, the, the mission is actually going to say, what are the Nadarim, right? You can't be made for every single letter. So what are the Nadarim that a person is actually a husband specifically is allowed to be made for? Devarim, sheyesh behen inui nefesh. It has to be a neder where, the, you know, there's some sort of self-affliction on the part of this wife. So for example, im erchatz, im lo erchatz. Im eskashev, im lo eskashev. A girl says, you know, I, I, I'll, I, I'll, I won't bathe. I won't adorn myself, whatever that means. You know, makeup, perfume, whatever it is. Just before we turn the page, though, the, 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 the words of the mission are a little confusing, right? Because in erchatz, in lower erchatz, that's not a neder. That sounds like more of a snot. Like, konam something a lie, in erchatz. Or konam something a lie, in lower. But the neder doesn't seem to be that, that she's bathing or that she's not bathing. And that's actually going to be the topic of tomorrow's very short peya medal. But, or something like that. But it, it doesn't seem to be clearly a neder. But, but again, the concept is inui nefesh, would be something like uh, bathing or whatever, you know, putting on perfume, whatever that is. Um, Rabbi Yossi, he disagrees. Rabbi Yossi says, no, ain't elu nidre inui nefesh. Bathing and perfume, that's not an example of inui nefesh. Elu hein nidre inui nefesh. According to Rabbi Yossi, what is an example of a netter inui nefesh? Amra konam perasa olam alai. She literally uh, disavows, you know, fruit. Uh, that's already an example of inui nefesh. Fruit was clearly a bigger deal back in the day. <laughs> So hareze yachol right? So if a wife says kona peris so olam alai, that's an example of inu nefesh. That's something that the husband would be allowed to do afar on. What about peros medina zu? So I, all the peros from whatever country uh, lie. So yavi lam dina So the husband can just bring from a different medina. That that that's not enough for inu nefesh. What about peros chen vinize alai? What if she says all the peros from jewel again? Ain't no yachol He can just go to somewhere else. What's the big deal? But 
But let's say she says this particular chenveni, and the husband happens to have credit with that particular chenveni, right? So that already would be considered a nefesh. That's already difficult for the husband to get her what she needs because he only shops at a specific place. He has a reason where he can only shop at a specific place. So if she offers that place, that would constitute inu nefesh. So again, yafer, dibere, reb, yosi. But again, it seems like reb yosi and the Tanakama both agree in theory that a husband is only allowed to be made for nidarim of inu nefesh. They just disagree on exactly what that category is. So the Gemara asks, Nidre Inui Nefesh Uda Mefer Sheimba Minu Nefesh Sheino Mefer. Is this even true? It's halacha in the Mishnah that a, a husband is limited to Nadarm of Inui Nefesh. But Tanya, we have a Brisa. Bein Ish Le Ish To, Bein Av Le Bito. There's a heckish between a man and his wife and a father and his daughter. Melamed Shehabal Mefer Nadarm Shebeino Le Beino. That teaches us that a Baal can be made for any Nadarm that are Beino, that are between. Beino and Beino, and that's a much, much, much broader category than Inu Nefesh. If a woman is married, almost any other that she makes is going to have some impact, Beino the Beino. Mm -hmm. So we have this price so that says that a person, a uh, Baal, is allowed to be made for any netter that is Beino the Beino, which again is much, much broader than Inu Nefesh. So what is our mission talking about? So the Gemara answers, you're right, Amri, Halin, Vahalin, Mayfair. You're right, a husband can be made for Beino the Beino. He could also be made for, certainly can be made for Inu Nefesh. Mihu. Inui nefesh made for the olam. If a, if a woman makes a netter that impacts inui nefesh and a husband has a farah, the netter is gone forever. I will aim behind inui nefesh. But if she makes a netter that's not inui nefesh, but it's beino lebeina, and he's made her, so kidi isa tachdua havi afara. Then so long as the two of them are married, it constitutes afara. But mikimigarish love, but once he divorces her, chayel alea nadra. All of a sudden, the netter comes back out of nowhere. Now it's 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 exactly how that works is above my pay grade, but the point is, and it makes sense, right? Because it, <laughs> but he's only allowed to do afara beno lebeno once he's no longer married, so then it's not beno lebeno, and the netter comes back. What? Well, again, this, if he dies, then uh, yeah, then I, presumably, then she, this netter would come back. Now, if it's Beno Levena. Anyway, whatever. I mean, the Gemara is going to fall off on this in, in a minute. So don't, don't, don't get too worked up. But, but the point is, um, Calm down. <laughs> as is typical in a Dharm, the next few lines that the Duque Sofram, I think, takes out. But the next few lines basically just reiterate. So we'll just read it quickly. The Gemara says, you know, what are the Nadarim that would come back? But a netter that has Inu Nefesh. Uh, Nidra. Okay. So the Gemara says, You know, Nidarm that don't have Inu Nefesh, but non, but we have this Mishnah later on. And if you recall, this was something that came up in Ksubis a number of times. But, you know, maybe we'll just back up the, the, the Mishnah. This is in, I think it's Pei Hei. It says, what about a case, right? If we recall from Ksubis, uh, a man owes his wife a whole bunch of things, right? In return, he also gets a few things from her, including her my seed time. What if a woman, what if a woman says, uh, Neder, that you can't uh, have my my seed time? So again, the my seed time are him. She can't do that. But there was a three-way machlokas, and we'll see next week, the Tanakama said, don't worry about it. It's just, the netter doesn't work. Don't, don't worry about it. Rabbi Akiva said, no, 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 be made for it. Why? Because what if she only owes you, her Maise Dayan is like $100, and she makes $150, so the netter will be chal on some portion of it. So be safe, just be du hafara. Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri, first we'll say it outside, he said du hafara. Why? Because maybe you'll divorce her, and all of a sudden the netter will be chal. So you might as well do hafara now, and then take care of the netter. So again, the question is, something that's beino le beino, the, the, the Gemara's terrorist just now was that when you divorce her, the netter will come back to life. So the Gemara says, what are you talking about? We have this Mishnah. Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri Omar, Yafer, you should be made for this netter. Shema yigar sheno te'asurula. Because maybe you'll divorce her, and all of a sudden, you'll be usher to these ma'asei yadayim. But Alma, ki megarish la umefer la me'ikara, hav yafara. But so of course, obviously Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri shita is that if you do hafara, it goes away forever, even when you divorce her. But the Gemara just said, that a netter, which is beino lebeina, but not inui nefesh, if you divorce her, the netter will come back. Now, her ossering, her maisei daim to him is clearly not her inui nefesh. If anything, it's his inui nefesh. 
but it's not hurry new nefesh. It's a classic example of something that's beino lebeina, but not new nefesh. So according to what the Gemara just said, how do you even understand Rabbi Yochanan Manuri? Rabbi Yochanan Manuri, his whole eitzah of be made for the netter wouldn't even work. Because if you're made for the netter and you later divorce her, the netter is anyway going to come back, right? Make sense? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the Gemara is going to modify this approach and it's going to say, you're right, Amri, you're right, Halin, Vahalin, Havyafar. Whether it's, whether it's Beno Lebena or Inui Nefesh, it's always going to be Hafar. Ella, Nidre, Inui Nefesh, but mm-hmm. if it's a netter that's just Inui Nefesh, mm-hmm. made for Bain La Atzmo, Bain La Acher. Not only is it gone forever, but even after you divorce her and even after someone else marries her. So now you can't remarry her. Now there's an Isser Machser Grushaso. That netter is gone forever. But ain ben inui nefesh. But if you have a, a netter which is beno lebena, but doesn't have inui nefesh, la asmo mefer, right? Even if you marry her again, it's still going to be gone. But la cherim eno mefer. But if someone else marries her, that netter is going to going to come back to life. So just in Yochanan Menuri's case, right? Let's say a girl is is makes a netter that her uh, her income, you know, the husband's going to be usher. So Rabbi Yochanan Menuri says, do hafara. And therefore, if you do hafara, then even after you, you know, if you divorce her and remarry her, it's always going to be fine. The netter is going to be gone. Now, if someone else marries her in the meantime, and you didn't do, mm-hmm. even if you do hafara, the bottom line is you, 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 you certainly can't take her back and mm-hmm. you'll be usher to her, uh, to her, her earnings. But again, you won't be married at that point. So her earnings were never much, but you should, in theory, she could even make a new netter now and ask you to, uh, to her earnings. But the Gemara says, just one last postscript, but this is how you need to read our Mishnah. It's not Elu Nidvarim Shehu Mayfair, but it's Elu Devarim. I lost the place. Elu Nidre Inui Nefesh. Sorry. Vachitan. Elu Nidarim Shu Mayfair. Bain La Atmo. Bain La Acherim. Nidarim Sheish Ben Inui Nefesh. That's how you read the Mishnah. It's not saying that you could only be Mayfair Nidre Inui Nefesh. It's you could only be Mayfair La Olam. Bain La Atmo. Bain La Acherim. If it's, it's a matter of Inui Nefesh. And I think we'll stop here because the rest of the Amid is really the next Sugya. And it's kind of what we spoke out in the beginning.